For those of us who've been following Mr. Phone will know that we love doing smartphone camera comparisons. But what does one do when a phone comes along with the claim that it has a camera that can actually beat a DSLR and it also has the best DxO Mark score ever recorded? Yes, I'm talking about the P20 Pro. And today we're gonna compare the P20 Pro with the mirrorless camera that actually shoots all of our YouTube videos. Let me just show it to you guys. In fact, I'm shooting this right now with the P20 Pro and yes, this is the camera that records all of our YouTube videos. This is a Sony Alpha 6300. See, I know for a fact that no smartphone camera can actually beat a proper mirrorless camera with a bigger sensor. But I'm really curious to find out how close the P20 Pro can actually go. And who doesn't like fun experiments? Hi, I'm Ashraf from Mr. Phone. And let's just find out if the P20 Pro can actually match the camera performance of the Alpha 6300 in today's video. Before we move forward, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to get notified about more such awesome tech videos. While I decided to test the two cameras, I did face a conundrum initially. How do I match the settings on the P20 Pro and the Alpha 6300 which is shooting me right now? So I decided to take the help of my friend and a blogger who actually runs the photography blogger channel, Kunal Malhotra. He told me that the Alpha 6300 has a crop factor of 1.5x because the focal number that is mentioned in the box is not equivalent to 35mm. This meant that if the Huawei P20 Pro shoots at 27mm, I needed an equivalent lens of 18mm. Similarly, if I do plan to shoot 3x on the Huawei P20 Pro, that is an equivalent of 80mm on a 35mm film camera. Therefore, the 1.5x crop on the Sony Alpha 6300 would be somewhere around 53.33mm. Since we don't have a lens with a focal length of 53.33mm, we decided to use our 55-210 for the purpose of this camera comparison. To understand this entire process, I've written a complete story on mrphone.com, a link to which is in the description below. Now, before we move on to the tests, there are three important things that you guys need to note. One, except for one particular test, I mostly shot in auto on the P20 Pro. Not many people use the Pro mode on a smartphone camera anyway. Two, I decided to switch off Huawei's Master AI mode for good reason. Because the Master AI mode tends to oversaturate the images and blow out the highlights as well. Definitely not good when you're testing camera samples. The third and the final point is that the Huawei P20 Pro shoots a 4 to 3 aspect ratio image, whereas the Alpha 6300 shoots a 3 to 2 aspect ratio image. What this means is that the Alpha 6300 image is slightly wider and we've had to crop it a bit to maintain parity. So that's all the precautions we took before we started shooting and comparing the cameras. Let's get down to our camera comparison. As usual, I made Ashish face the camera once again. I wanted to check how these cameras shoot portraits. For this test, I'm going to compare two RAW files shot using each camera. I asked my editor to work with the RAW files captured using the P20 Pro and the Alpha 6300. All we did is export JPEGs from the RAW files without any exposure or color correction or noise reduction applied either. On comparing the two converted JPEGs, you will notice that the P20 Pro doesn't offer the amount of details that the Alpha 6300 does. Obviously, the APS-C sensor is at play here, but the difference is visible only if you pixel peep. Also, on closer inspection, you will see a lot of noise, something that is not there on the Alpha's RAW image. This is the difference between a professional camera and a smartphone. Moreover, one thing you will immediately notice is that the Alpha 6300 offers a better depth despite using an aperture value of f by 4 compared to the f by 1.8 used by the p20 pro scientifically bigger sensors and proper lenses always offer better depth also note this an artificially created portrait shot cannot really match the fidelity and accuracy of a mechanical lens which is why i haven't used the portrait mode on the p20 pro for this test the first test clearly lays bare the shortcomings of a smartphone camera but i expected that Ooh, pretty sunflower. This is where things get interesting. I shot a sunflower using both the cameras and the differences are barely negligible in the JPEG files at first glance. Both the P20 Pro and the Alpha 6300 expose the subjects similarly. However, the color accuracy is a tad bit better on the Alpha sample. Also, Huawei's camera has a tendency to oversaturate the image. As far as details are concerned, you have to literally place your eyeball on the screen to spot any differences. There are a few areas where the Alpha 6300 offers better details, but the fact that the P20 Pro manages to produce such a clean and distortion-free image is a crazy achievement in and of itself. Moreover, the background defocus is near identical and the cutout looks very natural on the P20 Pro. I am stunned, honestly. 
Now let's test a wide shot. This is the entrance of our office building in Gurgaon, India. As far as color reproduction is concerned, there is literally no difference. From the reds to the blues to the greens, the P20 Pro does a commendable job of keeping up with the Sony Alpha 6300. However, I notice a lot of chromatic aberration or purple fringing on the P20 Pro shot. Take a look at the green areas in the tree for yourself. The 40MP sensor at full resolution is not very detailed either. For example, Big Bazaar written in bold letters at the left hand corner looks extremely crisp on the Alpha 6300. It is the exact opposite on the 40MP sample. This one is a stress test and we're performing this for the very first time in one of our camera comparisons. Thanks to the powerful processors inside smartphones, continuous shooting is a cinch most of the time. The Alpha 6300 in high plus mode can shoot 11 frames per second. The P20 Pro tops that. But know that you're shooting 10MP images on the phone and the Sony camera is actually shooting at native 24 megapixels. That fact notwithstanding, you will notice that the P20 Pro's camera has managed to keep Ashish in focus in all the frames whereas it's blurred on all the A6300 shots. I'm sure that the A6300 would have been able to do a much better job if it was shooting at the same resolution as the P20 Pro. But I still like what the P20 Pro has managed to achieve in this test. We've got a new Gundam in office and for the very first time, we're using it as a subject. This image is shot indoors with a couple of tube lights illuminating the room. It is surprising that the P20 Pro actually does a better job here. The Sony Alpha 6300 definitely needs a better lens in this scenario for sure. The details are soft in the Alpha image, whereas the P20 Pro's sample looks crisp. Even the color accuracy is better. This is really surprising. Like we all know by now, the P20 Pro can do 3x lossless zoom and 5x hybrid lossless zoom. In my testing, I noticed that the 5x zoom offers poor details. So let's stick to the 3x zoom for now. Oh, and here's the thing. You can use 3x zoom only in 10MP resolution, of course. You know how this works is, the 40MP camera works in conjunction with the 8MP telephoto lens to create a composite 10MP image with 80mm magnification. Is it a little confusing? Well, basically, the primary camera works with the telephoto camera to create a composite 10MP image. That's about it. This actually helps in preserving more details. One look at the picture and you notice that the P20 Pro does a stellar job once again. While the text on the fire extinguisher is clean and crisp in the Alpha 6300 shot, the P20 Pro's algorithm wipes out the noise. Granted, it creates a sort of smudged effect, but it isn't as bad as some aggressive algorithms I've seen on other phones. Moral of the story, use a 3x zoom on the P20 Pro, worry-free and a lot. I don't know about you guys, but I was eagerly waiting for this part of the comparison, the low light test. And the P20 Pro, like the caped crusader of the night, is truly the king of low light when it comes to smartphone cameras, thanks to its dedicated night mode. Using this dedicated mode, the P20 Pro manages to stitch a clean low light image with enhanced exposure, even when the phone is held in a human hand. And you know how unstable the human hand can be. I shot the images in auto mode on both the cameras, and the resulting samples are here for you to see. I mean, look at the night shot. It just offers a better exposure overall, and you can see that the seat on the left that is underexposed in other shots is clearly visible in the P20 Pro's night mode shot. Obviously, you don't get the same level of details and it is slightly smudged as well. And moreover, you can use the manual mode to reduce the shutter speed for clearer shots on the Alpha 6300. But I'm sure most people will agree that the smartphone's capability to achieve such low light shots is stupendous for sure. So how good is the P20 Pro? Like I said earlier, I didn't expect the P20 Pro to beat the Alpha 6300 or anything of that sort. But the P20 Pro impresses and boy, it's really good. And here's the thing about first time DSLR buyers, they don't really need one. While the entry level DSLR is actually becoming more and more affordable these days, let me tell you one thing, the bundled kit lens is generally not a good performer. So what this means is that you'll have to buy an extra lens. That means added costs. You want that 50mm prime lens for supreme portrait shots, don't you? Yes, that was a rhetoric. I know that you do. Therefore, for all intents and purposes, the Huawei P20 Pro should be more than enough for those extra likes on Facebook and Instagram. And let's not forget about the portability factor either. And with brands introducing machine learning and artificial intelligence to smartphone cameras, the future of smartphone cameras only looks very bright. No pun intended. And to sum it up, the P20 Pro is no DSLR, but it is by far the best smartphone camera you can buy right now. It's your turn, Google. What's up with the Pixel 3? I hope you liked our camera comparison of the P20 Pro with the Alpha 6300. Do let us know in the comment section below if you want any more such comparisons. Until next time, this is Eshad signing off. Adios.